Hey guys and welcome! Today I want to show you 14 settings that can make your life on the battlefield a bit easier and that you should definitely know about and check in your game. This is especially interesting for new players but also for everyone else because with the extensive options in 2042 there's a lot that might fly under your radar. The only thing I'm not touching here are the graphic settings for PC as this will be part of a separate video and the button mappings for controller because here I've already done a full video that you can find in the info box. And I want to start with the latest feature that was added to the settings and that's the all chat option for the chat box. It allows you to have a friendly chatter with the complete server during a game, which means you can not only send messages to your own team or to your squad, but also to the enemy team. The option can be found under display, hot general and then chat and is disabled by default. So if you don't want to see what the enemy team is writing or you don't want to chat with them, there's nothing you need to do. But if you want to use this feature, you need to enable it here. Next up is a crosshair setting you should know about, especially when you play on a larger screen or with a higher FOV, and that's the crosshair thickness. It can be found at display and then crosshair and can be set to thin, medium or thick. Medium is the default value, but if you feel like this is too narrow and you can't really see the crosshair in some situations, especially in bright environments, switch it to thick. If it is the other way around and the crosshair is too distracting or you like the different style of the small crosshair, then set it to thin. If you want to, you can also change the crosshair color and opacity here and if the crosshair is projected to your screen or not. If it is projected, it means that the crosshair will slightly move around the middle of the screen depending on your actions, so when you jump for example, it will move a bit up and down and when not projected, it is pinned to the middle of your screen no matter what your soldier is doing. But from what I've seen, it doesn't have any effect on your aim accuracy if the crosshair is projected or not. But if if you tend to suffer from motion sickness, this can make a difference and in this case you should keep it projected. Then there's another feature that is relatively new and was added to the game with one of the last updates and that's the actual damage numbers. It is just one line below the crosshair settings and by default this is turned off as well so you only have the kill feed and the XP events, but once it was activated there will also be the actual damage numbers shown for infantry in white and for vehicles in yellow. And this can make it a lot easier to tell how much damage you have already dealt and especially for vehicles how much damage you still need to deal. You can also set the size of the numbers to small, medium or large and when set to small they have the same size as the XP events and when set to medium or large they are a bit bigger. Definitely a nice option if you want more transparency in your gunfights. What I would also highly recommend to check is the setting for the minimap rotation and its view distance because I think this is especially interesting if you play a lot of different shooter games and you want a consistent behavior of the minimap for all of them. So first of all there is the rotate with view option that you can find at display and then minimap and if this is turned on like it is by default, the little arrow for your soldier points towards the top of the map while the map itself rotates around it. When the option is turned off, the top of the minimap always points towards the north and your soldier icon is turning inside of it. And both options have their benefits. I find it a lot easier to pin down the exact location of spotted enemies when the map rotates with my view, but when turned off you can use it as a compass and turn off the additional one in the middle of the screen to reduce the hot elements. If you've never experimented with this, I highly encourage you to do this, because it can really help you to react faster to situations with a lot of enemies around when you know how to read your minimap. What also comes in handy here are the different view distances and also the dynamic zoom of the map and this is a relatively new feature as well, because when toggling N on PC, the touchpad on PlayStation or the select button on Xbox, you can zoom the minimap in three stages and these stages can be defined here in the options. If you keep the dynamic zoom at auto, the map zoom will be low while on foot and will get bigger when you are in a ground or air vehicle, but it's always the values that are set here. So if the default values are too much zoomed in or out, try to experiment with different ones and see what works best for you. Another really important point that you should definitely check when you are new to the game is the field of view and also the ADS field of view. Both can be found at controller or mouse and keyboard and then on foot. 
The field of view will define how much you can see of your surroundings, but also how close or far enemies will appear. With a high field of view, you will see more of your surroundings, but targets appear further away and might be harder to hit. And with a low FOV, it's the other way around and you will see less of your surroundings, which means you have to turn more, but targets will also be closer to you and will be easier to hit. The setting is completely personal preference, but I always recommend values between 80 and 90. What's actually more interesting here is the ADS field of view, because this defines which FOV the game is using when you aim down sights. When this option is turned on, you will have the same field of view when aiming down sights that you have when not aiming down sights, so whatever value you have set. And the only thing that changes is that the screen is zoomed in depending on your weapon's optic. But with ADS field of view turned off, the game will use the default FOV when aiming down sights, plus the zoom you have on your weapon, which means you will have an additional zoom on it. And I always recommend to turn this option on, not only for a consistent FOV, no matter if aimed down sights or not, but also because the additional zoom can totally mess up your muscle memory and even cause motion sickness if you are sensitive to this. But of course, try it out for yourself and see what works best for you. Then there are two sprint options that I would also recommend to check and that's sprint to vault over and always use traversal sprint. Both of them can be found at the on foot settings again, just a few lines below the FOV. And for sprint to vault over, I can recommend to turn it on if you have the feeling that you get stuck on small obstacles sometimes, because with this option, your soldier will automatically vault over them when you are at sprint and you won't have to press the jump button. But this only works for very low objects that you sometimes barely notice on the map and not for everything that is higher than your soldier's knees. For this stuff, you still need to use the jump button, but it's helpful to avoid getting stuck somewhere. And the second option is always use traversal sprint and even though it might be tempting to turn this on and not have to press the sprint button a second time for the traversal sprint, I would highly recommend to keep this turned off. I know I've said something else in my last settings video about a year ago, but after testing out the different sprint to fire speeds, I've quickly changed my mind about this. Because when coming from the traversal sprint, you need a much longer time to aim down sights and also to start firing compared to the normal sprint or when walking. So only use traversal sprint when you really need it, but not by default and keep this option turned off. A few lines further down the list, there is something I always love to recommend and that I mentioned in loads of my videos already, and that's to bind steady scope to the same button as aimed on sights. This will be LT or L2 on consoles and the right mouse button on PC, and when doing this, your soldier will hold breath in the moment you aim down sights with a sniper rifle and you won't have to toggle or hold an additional button anymore. I find it especially helpful on controller and when playing more aggressive as a sniper, because it actually gives you a similar advantage that the recon class has with their proficiency, but for all classes. To bind the key, just click at the steady scope mapping, then tap your aimed on sights button and ignore the following message. It only tells you that the key is already bound to another function, which is aiming down sights of course. So it will be bound to both functions then. And while you are at it, you should also check the soldier zoom aim sensitivity that is right below, because here I would recommend a value between 80 and 90. It adjusts the sensitivity when aiming down sights, and when set to 80 for example, you will have 80% of your normal sensitivity when aiming down sights. So it's a bit slower than looking around. This gives you the advantage of a faster sensitivity when moving and turning, but a lower sensitivity when aiming, which means you can aim more precisely. If you should still be struggling with precise aiming, especially on higher zoom optics, you can also set a separate value for them at the end of the list. Just note that these values add to the already existing zoom aim sensitivity. So if you set it to 80 for a 6x scope for example, you will have 80% of 80% of your normal sensitivity when in ADS with that zoom scope. I would not recommend to use it in general, but for sniper rifles this can be helpful. And then there is another option that I usually recommend to enable in my settings videos, but that I would not recommend to use anymore, and that's parachute auto deploy. Because about a year ago, I thought that this mechanic would be really helpful, especially if you forgot to use the parachute or pull it too late, but by now I think it got me killed more times than it saved me. 
This mechanic is just not reliable enough. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes the parachute gets triggered when it shouldn't and the other way around, so it's really inconsistent. And I believe it's turned off by default, but if you should have copied my settings from one of the former videos and have this option enabled, you should probably turn it off again. And then there is uniform soldier aiming and this might be something that flies a bit under the radar for most players. What it does is that it dynamically adjusts your aim down sight sensitivity depending on the optic you use without the need of changing one or more of the aim values down the list. So when it is turned on and you set the coefficient down below to zero, a six times scope will feel a lot slower than a two times. And with a coefficient of 300, both optics will feel almost the same in their sensitivity, so the six times will feel pretty fast. But with the right value, it can give you a very consistent experience when aiming down sights, no matter which optic you use, and this will have a positive effect on your aim and also on building up muscle memory. The best value for me is 165, but that really depends on your playstyle. So what you should do is to test values between 120 and 180 and see what works for you. Choose a weapon you feel most comfortable with, equip three optics with different zoom and then go to No Name's Aim Trainer and shoot at the bots. The code for it can be found in the pinned comment below. After a while you will find a value that feels natural across all three optics and that's the one you should keep. If you have already changed any of the zoom aim values for the different magnifications further down the list, I would recommend to set them back to 100 for now and only do some fine tuning here later on if necessary. Then there is not an actual recommendation but a heads up on a setting and that's the vehicle aim sensitivity that you can find on the next tab. Cause many players might not know that this is also connected to the controls of List TV missile, Crawford's turret and Casper's drone. So if you feel like one of the specialist gadgets is too slow in handling, especially if you play with controller, you need to set a higher value for the vehicle sensitivity. The other way around, if you change this value because your vehicle aim feels too slow keep in mind that this will affect the specialist gadgets as well. Not sure why they haven't added separate values for them, cause especially for lists this would be really helpful, but it is what it is. And then at the end there are three more settings that you can find at the accessibility tab and the first one is the camera shake. I'm not quite sure what the default value is here, but if it is any higher than 20, which is the lowest possible, you should definitely set it down to this value. Cause it defines how much your screen will shake from nearby explosions, but also from environmental events like the start of the rocket on orbital for example. And this can be really distracting and even affect your aim stability during gunfights. One line below this you can then find the concussion effect and this defines whether your screen will turn black or white when your soldier is hit by a concussion grenade. By default this is set to white which can be really annoying and blinding when you usually play in a dimly lit room, so I would recommend to set it to black. And last but not least, in the two rows at the bottom, you can adjust the visual and sound effect for Zane's trade. That means that when Zane is low on health and then kills an enemy, he will instantly start to regenerate health. And this start of regeneration comes with a visual effect where your screen turns a bit brighter and more colorful for a short amount of time, and it also has a sound effect. The sound might not be annoying, but the visual effect can be, so if you're wondering what this is or if it is too distracting for you, just turn it down here. And that's it for today, I hope these tips help you to find the perfect settings for you and your playstyle, and if that's the case, be sure to drop a like or a comment below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. On to then, thanks for watching and thanks to my members for the additional support, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.